How many times have you heard a calorie is not always a calorie or that all calories are not created equal? I'm sure you've heard these things before. And in today's video, we're actually going to explore this topic and I'm going to prove to you that calories are always calories. What's up guys, Coach Eric Bowling here. Look, I cannot tell you how many times my YouTube videos get bombarded by comments that just say calories do not matter. And I cannot tell you how just out of context that is because first of all, in what context do calories not matter? And the amount of times that I hear things such as a calorie is not always a calorie. Well, just purely by definition, a calorie is a unit of measurement. So if we look at it just from that standpoint alone, Let's just interchange the words. A unit of measurement is not always a unit of measurement? Does that make any sense to you guys? That would be like me saying an inch isn't always an inch. But the thing that you guys have to understand is that calories in, calories out is nothing more than like what is. It's science. It is law of thermodynamics. It is this whole idea that energy can't be created nor can it be destroyed. It can only be transferred. And if you have a net balance that is in the negative, something has to change. And that energy that is going to change is going to be your body mass, particularly your fat tissue. So when people say that calories are not all created equal, we are gonna go into that topic now. Because what I think they're trying to say is that the way your body might use calories coming from specific macronutrients is not always a one for one. And so just stay with me for a second because this might get a little complicated, but I'm going to do my best to make this as simple as possible. So let's say, for example, you have two food items. You have 200 calories coming from chicken, and then you have 200 calories of table sugar. Now, just by definition alone, these are both 200 calories how many calories your body will burn just on processing the chicken is going to be more than is required to process the table sugar. So while we both started with 200 calories, because protein specifically has a higher thermic effect, and all that means is that the amount of energy required to process it is around 25 to 30% of the total calories of that thing, then yes, the net balance when we look at both of these is going to be different than what we started with. But they are still calories. And we are still within the realm of calories in, calories out. So this is why we have to be very clear with our definitions and what we are trying to say. So while the thermic effect of this is greater it doesn't matter. It is still a calorie at the end of the day. So the thing that you guys have to get clear is how your body invests or processes calories coming from different macronutrients. What you are left over with in terms of your net amount might be different than what you started with. Another thing for you guys to get your heads wrapped around is that Using a tool like tracking your calories is very similar how someone might use a budget to keep their finances in check. Now, if you made a lot of money and you were very frugal with your spending, you might not have a budget and you could potentially still be in a positive net balance at the end of the day where your money is growing. Now, it's not to say that the absence of having a budget is the thing that disregards the positive effect you are having on making your money increase. No, it's just saying that a budget is a tool that we can use to get a better understanding or that can help us better understand if our money is growing, if we're maintaining, or if we're losing money. And the same thing is true about calories. Using a tracker, using a a uh, tool such as counting calories is the same thing like having a budget. Do you need to use one? No, you don't. But it doesn't mean that because you have lost weight without counting calories, that somehow you have defied the laws 
that govern this universe. So I hope that paints a clear picture that just because people can lose weight without counting calories does not mean that counting calories is not an effective strategy. Now, you guys might be saying, well, it's useless if you just focus on um, prioritizing whole foods. And that's not true. Now, there's been a lot of research that has been done recently, and we can look at individual food groups, such as like Mediterranean style, keto, uh, paleo, vegetarian, whatever you want. And what this meta-analysis shows is that when protein is equated and calories are equal, that there really isn't any difference when it comes to total weight loss or when it comes to any specific diet being superior than the other. Now, another way for you guys to understand why counting calories might be a little bit more stressful is because it's almost like going from automatic to a manual uh, stick shift. You are in more control than you would be if you just focused on uh, eating whole foods. So maybe eating whole foods, making sure that you're not eating anything processed. Maybe that style of eating, that intuitive style is more like driving your car on automatic. And on the other hand, counting calories and following something that's more flexible is more like having your diet on manual. So one of them is going to give you more variety and more full range of what you can possibly do, while the other is going to be a little bit more restrictive. I want you guys to really think about this. When you are thinking of what foods you are going to eat, you should be thinking of what is the best investment? And obviously, research has shown that if you focus on prioritizing highly unprocessed, unrefined foods, high quality sources of uh, food choices, that on general, those things, because they are not denatured, because they are not highly refined, uh, and because they're more than likely going to be higher in protein, those things alone, they will have a higher thermic effect, so you could technically have more in terms of volume while not actually having to increase your calories, A, because those foods might be lower calorie foods in general, and B, because the thermic effect of those foods is usually going to be a lot greater than their counterparts, which are going to be highly refined, ultra-processed food sources. And you might also hear something known as that calories in, calories out are not individual variables. There's been a lot of doctors recently who try to spout this nonsense that if you decrease your calories by 500 calories, you will simultaneously decrease your calorie output by 500 calories. And let me just tell you this. There is no research that exists that shows that at all. Yes, if you decrease calories, your body will try to find ways to decrease your NEAT, which is your non-exercise activity in thermogenesis. That is pretty just much like how much steps you get, how much activity you do throughout the day that is not necessarily classified as exercise. So your body will try to decrease your NEAT over time to have some type of balance. But that doesn't mean that all of a sudden, because you remove 500 calories from your diet to put yourself in a deficit, that you have now shut your metabolism down by 500 calories. If this was the case, that your body was always working to find this balance, we wouldn't have bodybuilding shows. We wouldn't have any type of these Olympic athletes getting in shape for things. How, does, how do any of these doctors think weight loss works if they believe that these are not individual variables. Because when you are trying to lose weight, if you want to maximize your potential with how much fat you lose, your goal should not only be to decrease your calorie uh, input, but to increase your calorie output. And this is how people get shredded for photo shoots all the time. This is how bodybuilders get ready to prep for their show. They increase their cardio. They decrease their calories. This is how it works. This is the whole idea. It's almost like, let me give you the example, that not only have you put yourself on a financial budget, you are no longer going out to restaurants, you are saving more, let's say you've cut quite a bit of subscriptions, but on top of that, you are also investing in making more money every single month. Think about that for a second. That is exactly how calories in, calories out works. 
So when we talk about things like low carb or where we talk about things like specific diets and trends, this is why you will always hear me say at the end of the day, you have got to look at calories, not that you have to track calories, but that you have to make sure at the end of the day, whether you track or not, that there is a deficit occurring if your goal is to lose fat. So I think that's something that you just have to keep in mind when it when it comes to these whole things. And as long as that is something that you can focus on and something that you are making sure that you understand, you are going to be in a much better place. And I guarantee you, nobody is going to be calling you a quack. So look, that's it for today's video. Make sure that you guys leave a like. All right, just for the sake of science and sound science, leave a like. And let me know if there's anything that you guys wanted to go over that I did not cover in this video, just go ahead and put it in the comments below. And as always, guys, stay strong and I will see you next time.